Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Math with Dr. War. We've made it to the end of the week and we've made it to the end of algebra practice. Um, we're ending off with something simple so if you stayed with me to the week thank you. If you are now beginning the series please check out all the videos I did this week on the algebra practice. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be solving linear equations and inequalities in one variable. Now these are pretty simple on the task test, so I'll be walking through how to solve them and also how to use the calculator. The first uh, question says the equation $2.25m plus $3.50 equals $21.50 can be used to calculate the cost of riding in a taxi cab. Given the number of miles traveled m in miles, and what is the value of m? Now, one of the things about the task test is that they're going to try to make everything into a word problem. So once I see the word equation, and then they're asking me to value, find the value of m, I'm like, okay, this is just an equation. So my equation is two dollars and twenty-five cents m plus three dollars and fifty cents equals to $21.50. Now, a lot of my students get scared because they see decimals, but um, check out, I have a video adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing decimals if you need a refresher. So you're solving for M. I tell my students put a box around who you're trying to find. That gives you a clue that you can't get rid of the $2.25 first. You need to get rid of the $3.50. Do the opposite. So I'm going to minus 350 on both sides. So I am doing this problem like if it was on the non-calculator section. So this goes, I'm going to bring down the $2.25 M equals, this is an easy subtraction, 0, 0, decimal point, can't take 3 from 1, so I borrow 3 from 11 is 8, and then I bring down the 1, that's 18. My final step to get the M by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by $2.25. Now, again, I'm treating this like I am on the non-calculator section. So I have to figure out how many times $2.25 goes into $18. Now, remember, when you have decimals and your divisor is a decimal, you can't divide. You have to first change your divisor to a whole number. So I'm going to move my decimal point to places to the right, and that becomes 225. I have to do the same thing to my uh, numerator. So I'm going to move it to places, 1, 2, so it becomes 1,800. So because I can't use a calculator, I'm like, I'm going to let the answers help me. So I'm going to start with 8. So I'm going to go on the side, and I'm going to take 225 and times it by 8. And I'm hoping if I get 1,800, then I'm done. 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 4 is 20. 8 times 2 is 16 plus 2 is 18. Yep, I got my 1800. So my answer is A. It's actually 8 miles. Now, uh, a lot of times in the classroom, students ask me, oh, Dr. War, can I put this in a calculator and will it give me an answer? And I usually say no. The only thing your calculator can do for you is computation. So I tell my students, all you can do with the calculator is just do the basic math. $21.50 subtract the $3.50. You get the 18. And then remember your last step was to divide by $2.25. And there you get the 8. That's all you can do for, with the calculator. Just do the manual cal calculations. Let's move on to the next example. So notice the first one was embedded in a word problem. And then this one, sometimes they do on the task test give you a question like this. Consider the equation 0.3x minus 4.2 equals 0.75. What is the value of x? So notice this one is not in a word problem. So I have 0.3x minus 4.2 equals 0.75. So I'm solving for my x. That box tells me don't get rid of the 0.3. I add 4.2. Now remember, when you're adding and subtracting, you have to line up by the decimal point. And I add zeros. 
this goes, I get 0.3x equals, this is an easy addition, this would be 5, 9, 0.4, $4.95. And solving for x, I'm going to divide by 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Now remember, when your divisor is a decimal, you can't divide, so I'm going to move this one place to make it a 3 which means that in my numerator, I'm going to move it one place, so that's actually 49.5. Now again, I'm going to treat this like I could not use a calculator. So I have 49.5, and I'm going to divide by 3. So because my divisor is now a whole number, I can bring out the decimal point here. 3 goes into 4 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. Subtract, I get 1. Bring down the 9. 3 goes into 19 6 times, 6 times 3 is 18, subtract I get 1, bring down the 5, 3 goes into 15 5 times, and 5 times 3 is 15. So my answer is 16.5, so as always you're going to, if you're doing the paper-based test, just write it at the top and then bubble in your answers. Well, do a better job bubbling in better than me. And there you go. That's your answers. 16.5. If you're on the computer test, there'll be a box, and you just need to type in 16.5. Again, if you're using the calculator, so basically you would have the 0 0.75, and you would add the $4.20. Why am I saying $4? The 4.2. Yeah, 4.95 and then remember your last step was to divide that by 0.3 and you get your 16.5 so I showed you basically um, if it came on a non-calculator what to do and if it actually came on a calculator section what you would do now on the task test now on the task test sometimes they don't want you to actually solve the problem they'll give you a word problem and you have to figure out how would you solve the problem, like what will be the steps. So this is what this question is actually doing here. So it says Lewis took the following steps to solve the equation 4 and then in parentheses x minus 1 equals to 40. And then they outline the steps. Here is a red flag. They don't include all the steps. So if you notice here, they jumped from 4x minus 4 equals 40 to 4x equals 44. So sometimes they don't actually write out all the steps, which is fine. Now the question says which statement, and here you have to read carefully with some of these questions um, when they give you these equations and then ask you what's going on in them. So this says which statement explain why the solution following step one is a valid step. So here is step one. So we have to look to see who's following step one. Now because it says solution, a lot of students a lot of students skip step two and go to solution, but it said explain why the solution following step one is a valid step. Who follows step one? Step two. So they went from 4x minus 4 equals to 40 to 4x equals to 44. Now, how in the world did they do that? In order to do that, they got rid of the 4. So they added 4 to both sides. Now, because they add 4 to both sides, you get 4x equals to 44. So I'm going to go here, and A says if you add 4 to both sides of an equation, the sides remain equal. So A is your answer. Again, you have to read carefully. Uh, final one, final, final one. Here we have an inequality and it says which number is in the solution set of the inequality and it's 5x plus 3 greater than 38. So we got to solve this. So again, notice that this is a two step. That is why I keep hammering away and telling folks, look, make sure that when you are going on the task test, you can solve a two step a variable on both sides and with parentheses. Most of the time you see two steps, so that's why I kind of ring that in my students' ears. So again, we're solving for x, 
right? Get rid of the 3, so I'm going to minus 3 from both sides. I get 5x is greater than 35. Um, solving for x, divide by 5. But then I have x is greater than 7. Now this is an inequality, and an inequality got a solution set. So they don't have one answer like an equation. Like this equation, x is 11. That's it. But for an inequality, you have many solutions. So here they're saying that the value for x has to be greater than 7. So looking at your answers, because one of these is your answer, who here is a possible solution? If x is greater than 7, then I would choose 8. And that's your answer. Don't be tricked with choosing 7 because it said x is greater than 7. x is greater than 7, but it means that you can't choose 7. You have to choose something greater than 7, so the best possible answer is 8. We've made it to the end. Um, I'm tired. You're tired. I'm doing these after I come home from a very long day of work. Again, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, share, um, comment. Um, I do make requested videos. If your test is coming up, good luck. Don't be nervous. Be confident. And in all, have a great day, folks.